Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be taking a look at arcs and their measures. So for this, you're going to need your notes, something to write with, as well as a calculator. So some basic arc vocabulary that we should get inside of our notes, people. Um, here are some things we should write down, including drawing this picture, okay? So for this, we're talking about circles again. And notice that C is in the center. And basically, we have that arc of a circle. We've talked about arcs before in terms of finding arc length. And we're going to continue talking about arcs, but we're also going to be referring to those angles that are within the circle as well. So in this picture, there are a few things that I should point out. First of all, the red part from A to B here, that is an arc. It is a piece of the circle. It's considered a minor arc because it, because it is less than half of the circle in length. The central angle is an angle located at the center of a circle like that. So the, where it's pointing there at C, that's a central angle. And then A to D to B, the arc, now notice that's a curve up there. So A to D to B is a major arc because it, again, goes more than half of the circles, uh, distance around half of that circle, okay? So be thinking about, is that minor arc or is that a major arc? It depends on what portion of the circle it takes up. You should also notice that if there's a half of a circle exactly, well, then it's not more or less than half. So that's called a semicircle. It's an arc with endpoints that are on the endpoints of a diameter. So that would be exactly half of the circle's uh, distance around. So that would be what we call a semicircle. So minor arcs, major arcs, or semicircle, let's make sure that we have that vocabulary under control. You don't necessarily need to draw this one in your notes, but please make sure that you're watching. We have A to B. What would we call that in terms of a major, minor, or semicircle? A to B is curved above there, so that means that we're going the shortest distance from A to B. I would call that a minor arc. What if I go from A to B to C? Still a minor arc because we're going less than halfway around the circle. What if I go from B to D to C? Now, you have to go in this order. So B to D all the way around to C. Now it switches to major because that's more than half of the circle. So that's considered a major arc. B to C to D. Let me trace that one. B to C to D. That is exactly half of the circle, ladies and gentlemen. So that I would call a semicircle. So understanding the vocabulary, again, is part of the issue that we need to deal with for this unit. Let's also take a look at how we can measure arcs. We've talked about arc length before, but now we're going to go back to talking about degrees. So here's a little diagram you may want to draw in your notes. We have 50 degrees at the central angle there. And it says the measure from arc A to B would also be called 50 degrees. It's 50 degrees out of a 360 degree circle. So if we needed to find, let's say, the distance from A to D to B, if we remember that there are 360 degrees in a circle and we have a 50 degree piece right there, then we can calculate that that's 310 left over for that bigger piece. So we can measure arcs in terms of length, like we've done before, or in terms of degrees of a circle, like 360 in the total. So here's a key fact that you need to make sure you get in your notes. The measure of a minor arc is the same as the measure of its angle, its central angle, OK? So that angle in the center will tell you how many degrees that arc piece is across from it. If it's 50 degrees in the center, that piece across from it is going to be 50 degrees as well. So let's find a couple more examples here. Let's maybe, if you want to put this one in your notes, let's take another look at these and see if we can find some degrees now. We're going to find the measure of each arc in circle C where AB is a diameter. So they're telling us that AB kind of shows us where halfway across the circle would be. So we need to find out the number of degrees from D to B along the curve, like it says there in A. So from D to B along the curve, I want to know the number of degrees. So because it says to find the measure of each arc, not the length, OK? So I need to know the number of degrees. Well, if I look across from that, the central angle is 135. So that means that arc is also 135 degrees. What about from D to A to B? From there to there. 
D to A to B. Well, that would be everything but the 300 or but one the 135 there that's marked. So everything, all the rest of the circle, but the 135. So if we take 360, subtract 135 to find that piece that's left. That means that that's a 225 degree piece that's left there. Now, what about from A to D to B? A to D to B, ladies and gentlemen, that is a 180 degree piece. Why did we say that? Well, remember, they told us that A, B is a diameter, so that cuts that circle in half, so that that has to be a 180 degree piece. What if all those little arcs are marked congruent like this one? Well, we've done problems like this before. Well, if you have 360 degrees in a circle, and each of these little pieces are all marked with a little congruent sign, and it looks like there's eight of them, all we would do is take 360 divided by eight, and that would tell us that each little angle here is 45 degrees. Well, if that's 45 degrees, then each little arc out here is also 45 degrees of the circle. So if I wanted to find from E to F to G, E to F to G, this way, E to F to G, 45 plus 45, each of these would be 45, right? So that makes 90. So that's a 90 degree piece of the circle. So understanding that whole congruent idea is really important. Speaking of congruent, we should get this part in your notes. Congruent circles. Congruent circles are circles that have congruent radii. So that means they have the same radius. Congruent arcs are arcs that have the same measure, but be careful arcs with the same measure have to be in the same circle or in congruent circles because I could draw a really big circle and have a 45 degree arc and I could draw a really tiny circle and have a 45 degree arc and they would not be the same. So we want to make sure that congruent arcs really in fact are congruent to each other. So we're going to take a look and tell whether CD and EF are congruent and we're going to explain why or why not. So CD and EF are the two arcs that we're looking at. Well, here's CD in this first one, and here's EF in the second one. Notice they're both across from a 45-degree angle, so they both will be 45-degree piece of the circle. So are they congruent? Yes, they are. Because they're within the same circle and they're the same number of degrees, that's why they are congruent. Whereas if I look at the second example here, C to D is this arc, E to F is this arc. They're both across from the 110 central angle. But do you notice that the blue line is a whole lot longer than the red line? That's because the circles are not the same size. So the arcs are not going to be the same size. Even though they're the same number of degrees, they're not, in fact, congruent to each other. So no for this one because the circles are not the same size. So the circles are not congruent to each other. So this idea of being congruent involves us taking a look at circles and seeing if they are in fact congruent, and then we can say arcs are congruent as well. Okay, and then one more, we want to know if C to D and E to F are in fact congruent to each other in this picture. Here's C to D, here's E to F. What do we think? Well, guys, in fact, they would be, right? These two angles would be the same. Remember way back when, when we talked about vertical angles? It's been a while. Those are vertical angles, and that means they are congruent to each other. And because those angles are the same, then that means the arcs across from them would have the same number of degrees. And because they're in the same circle, well, yes, in fact, those would be congruent arcs. Okay, so thinking about this idea of congruent, thinking about the idea of angles inside the center of circles and how that translates to the exterior, that's pretty important for us to know. So I want to thank you for taking good notes and see you later.